A Deconstruction of Evolution versus God, a new anti-evolution video by Ray Comfort, next on Atheist Viewpoint. Hello and welcome to Atheist Viewpoint. I'm your host, Dennis Horvitz, and I'm Dave Moscato, Public Relations Director. Uh, a recent uh, poll by YouGov says that only one in five believe in pure evolution. Uh, and in 2012, a Gallup poll says that 46% actually still believe in creationism. Uh, and I guess uh, you gave me some other resources here. Uh, Jacqueline Glenn, Evolution versus God, an Atheist Review. Right, that's a, she's a YouTuber. If you just go to YouTube, her channel name is Jacqueline Glenn, and the video Evolution versus God, an Atheist Review does a good breakdown. Right, about what we're going to talk about. And also just generally for uh, information about evolution, you can go to talkorigins.org. Right, and also I would recommend The Greatest Show on Earth by Richard Dawkins. Right. So we're uh, here to discuss uh, Evolution versus God, which is the anti-evolution video made by uh, uh, evangelist turned filmmaker, quote unquote, uh, Ray Comfort. Um, I'd just like to mention that I've seen Ray Comfort before. Mm -hmm. And uh, several years ago, I saw him in a debate in uh, Manhattan, New York. Uh, and the idea was that uh, it was he and his uh, little pal, Kirk Cameron, and the whole point was they were going to prove the existence of God without referring to the Bible, which, of course, they constantly did. They referred to the Bible. So um, Ray gets it wrong, and perhaps you can tell us, first of all, before we get into the rest of it, what's wrong with the title Evolution versus God? Well, Evolution versus God sets it up as, as a dichotomy, and it's a false dichotomy. Uh, just because... Uh, you, you have evolution on one side doesn't mean that God is on the other side like that. Um, even if Ray somehow was able to show that evolution is wrong, that first of all doesn't show that any creator did it. It just means we don't know the answer. And it definitely doesn't show that any specific God did it, let alone the Christian God. Right. Well, um, but this, is, this has been done before. I mean, there have been films and books and speeches and seminars devoted to anti-evolution. But... Why is this particular rendition by Ray Comfort uh, of concern to us? Well, the main reason is that Ray has made a public commitment to pass out a million copies of the DVD of this to public school children, which uh, worries me. Uh, children are very susceptible to indoctrination, and it's not something that we want to stand by and watch happen. Right. Um, and uh, I, guess, I, I guess he intends to do this uh, by, without actually going onto school property. Is that, is that how he does it? Or? He's, he's done one distribution so far in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. um, and he just, as far as I understand, he stood on the sidewalk, which is public property. You're right. allowed to do this and passed him out right. to, to kids going in and out. So that's the way he kind of circumvents the uh, establishment clause separation of church and state. And that's legal. That he's, is legal. he's allowed to oh, do it that. Oh, it certainly right. is legal. But it's, uh, I mean, this isn't science and it's worrisome. Right. And, and, but as to, the, um, as to the contents of the video itself, um, wh 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 why is this different than, uh, say, other, other videos that have been made covering the same subject? What specifically, uh, what do we have a problem with? Well, there are a couple of things that I really have a problem with. One is that his, his major technique for debunking evolution is that he talks about it uh, being a, a change of kinds from one kind to another kind. 
And the real problem with that, uh, it, we're, we're not going to be able to find a change of kinds because that's not what evolution claims. That's not what evolution is. Kind is not an official scientific, you know, defined term in biology. What he really means is uh, just taxonomically, uh, you know, domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. The, that's the classifications that we use. And if he's talking about speciation, which is what I really think he's trying to say, changing from one species to another species, we see that all the time. Mm -hmm. We have very strong evidence for this. Uh, we've seen it in controlled conditions in laboratory settings with bacteria and other things. And uh, this, isn't, this isn't a mystery. Evolution is something that we know happens. Right. But um, when I saw the video, um, it seems to me it has less to do with a kind of uh, misunderstanding of evolution. Uh, when he uses the term kind, he's deliberately setting up, it seems to me he's setting up a straw man. That he's, in other words, he's trying to trying to insinuate that the expression "kind" is in and of itself kind of a scientific way of looking at things. And then when he interviews people and they can't define the way uh, he has set it up, then he's basically implying that scientists or people who are well versed in evolution can't, by their own definition, support evolution. Right. And I mean, he's getting this term in in Genesis one twenty four and twenty five. It says that uh, animals are created after their kind. And uh, several times throughout the video, he, uh, he's given examples of uh, like one species of fish turning into another, another species of fish. And he says that's not a change of kinds, though, because they're still fish. Well, I mean, a fish is, is not, uh, it's not a species. It's, right. you know, I, I it's think a it's general a, term. I think it's a, like a class or an order sure. or something. Um, but yeah, that covers a huge range of species. And if you're trying to find a fish giving birth to a non-fish, of course you're not going to find that because that's not what anyone says happens, including Darwin. Right. Uh, interesting, because we were talking before the show, and uh, uh, what we're dealing with now when we say evolution, of course, is known as the modern synthesis. But in fact, uh, Dar if Darwin were to take an exam uh, on, evo on modern evolution, he probably he wouldn't pass. He wouldn't oh, no, pass. not even close. Darwin, remember, when he was writing, we had no idea what DNA was or genetics or anything like that. He, he understood heritability um, from Mendel, but this was way before um, any, any kind of the genome project or anything like that. And in, um, in modern talk about evolution, we don't talk about Darwinian evolution. We talk about the modern synthesis, which is com uh, combining our understanding of genetics with our understanding of heritability and uh, natural selection and speciation. Right. Well, anyway, getting back to the act, uh, I, mean, I mean, we've, we've uh, devoted shows to this before and we'll continue to do so. But uh, I think what we want to emphasize today has less to do with the obvious fact that he's wrong and um, the very obvious fact that uh, he seems to have done some creative editing. Right. And uh, can, we get, can we give some examples of that? Sure. And I mean, there are a couple, and I believe that we have clips of these. Um, like, for example, uh, at uh, around five minutes and 50 seconds, if you're following along, uh, he's having a conversation with PZ Myers, which we'll go to now. The scientific method is, must be observable and repeatable. So could you give me one piece of observable evidence for Darwinian evolution? Okay, I would point to, as one great example is, look at the genetics of the stickleback. What's that? Uh, so stickleback fish are a very interesting collection of species that were recently isolated after the end of the Ice Age. What have they become? They're, they're various species of sticklebacks. They stayed as fish? Well, of course. So in this clip, uh, he does what we were talking about earlier, where he said, they're, you know, because it's not a fish to a non-fish, that it doesn't count. Right. Uh, that, is, that is evolution when you're talking about a change in alleles from generation to generation. And it's just a straw man. That's really all it is. And uh, the way that he sets this up, he routinely says in his promotion of this and throughout the video that scientists who he asked were unable to give him evidence of evolution. And they, they were giving him evidence. They were giving him evidence throughout. They just didn't make it in. Right. Um, there's another great example of um, what uh, seems to be creative editing at 7.21 in the video, which we'll cut to now. <laughs> These are changes of kinds. They're still fish. They're distinctly different fish. We have 
thousands of examples. Can you, can you give me one? I can give you, I can give you thousands, just one. one. For instance, I would say, uh, look at Lenski's experiments with bacteria then. So what do the bacteria become? Uh, the bacteria are still bacteria, of course. So that's not Darwinian evolution. That's not a change of kinds, is it? It, it is a change, it is a change in the genetic makeup of the bacteria. Which is so you can see, the way that this video is set up, the whole thing is these short clips. Right. I would estimate that the average clip is maybe six or eight seconds in length for the entire thing. The first time I watched this, for the first minute or two, I thought I was watching a trailer for it right. and, and waiting for it to start because it was just these short clips. But that's how the whole thing is. He doesn't let anybody finish or give good examples. Uh, and PZ Myers actually wrote about this on his blog. Um, as far as uh, Ray Comfort admitted to uh, an interviewer, I think it was Hemet Meta, that yes, he does selectively edit, um, but that's what editors do as far as uh, taking out irrelevant things and editing for time. Uh, and PZ says, yes, that's fine, and people do that, and it's not a surprise. But he says, quote, what they don't do unless they are ideological hacks and liars is chop up the interview to completely misrepresent the point I just explained to them at length. And then he goes on to say, I would explain why his objection was invalid and how his expectations of the nature of the evidence were wrong, but somehow that, that part of it uh, always ended up on the cutting room floor so that he could announce in all of his promotional materials and in the movie itself that I was unable to provide any evidence for evolution. Right. That last bit is a lie. Right, and, and, and I, I think that um, uh, it's important to emphasize, just in case uh, someone from that quote-unquote camp sees this, is that we're, because of time limitations, we're only showing a few examples. But actually what you're seeing, what we, what we have shown you, is just a, a tiny piece of the way the entire video is, is more or less covered. Um, the style of, of uh, in, it's really ambush video, uh, in, interview in the first place. And uh, you can see them, uh, the way they're set up, they're being, being badgered. And um, this, is a, this is a time honored for their side um, method of, of, of interviewing and trying to prove their point is that they will ask a question that can't be answered with a yes or no or with a couple of sentences. And uh, because of this, the, the interviewee gets very frustrated. And so uh, Ray Comfort is very careful to show facial tics and nervous body language that, that looks like they're really having trouble answering the question because they don't know the answer. And that's part of what happens when you ask just random undergraduate students that aren't necessarily able or ready or or prepare to answer uh, or people who thing. use the collo use colloquial understandings of terms like evolution and, and faith um, again we were talking before the show and and the word faith is kind of bandied about um, without really you know understanding the f without the understanding of the philosophical definition of it um, right there's there's more than one way to use that term faith and uh, the way that we're using it in religion would be to say uh, a firmer unwavering belief in, in a proposition despite a lack of sufficient evidence or despite evidence to the contrary. But that's not the way we're talking about faith in the colloquial sense of uh, belief in, uh, in scientific facts like evolution. What he really means to say there is not faith. He means to say confidence in the scientific sense that we have an enormous body of evidence and this is worth believing because it's shown itself to be reliably true. Right, and, and, and also I just want to point, point out that people use the word proof kind of uh, um, fa fast and loose with the term uh, proof when actually uh, proof is, is basically confined to mathematics. Right. I mean, just because the way science works in empiricism, you're always subject to the, the problem of induction, as David Hume called it. And uh, you, you don't prove things, you just have different degrees of certainty based on how much evidence that you have. Right. And, and for, for, for the theory of evolution, there's, uh, there's not only a preponderance of evidence, but I don't think I'd be exaggerating too much to say there's an avalanche of evidence. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's true. In fact, I would even go so far as to say that the theory of evolution is kind of a misnomer. It's really the theory of evolution by means of natural selection. The right. natural selection part is the part that we are uh, technically assuming happens as far as how this works. The evolution part is the observation, and the mechanism is the part that's theoretical. Right. Um, but in any case, uh, you, uh, you know, Ray does, Ray does really uh, some very slick uh, editing work. And, uh, you know, he's, uh, what is his stated, what, what, what do you think his stated position is for doing it, for doing this? Well, I mean, he seems to be 
uh, he appears to be trying to uh, get to the bottom of how evolution works, and that, that I mean that's how he's trying to come across. But personally, I don't believe that Ray really has any strong interest in biodiversity and and evolutionary biology. That just doesn't seem to me to be something that he's sincerely and honestly interested in. If I had to speculate about his real motivation for making this video, which I don't think many people would disagree with me about, it's the promotion of Christianity and to evangelize. Right, um, right. and, and there's, there's um, what's at stake for, not just for him, but for someone like him? What's at um, if, uh, if, well, you know, if evolution is true, and I'm not, I'm not questioning it myself, but from his standpoint, if evolution is true, what does that mean for his position and people well, like him? Right. Well, if you're a Christian, and I mean, there are Christians, plenty of Christians who believe in, in evolution, mm -hmm. uh, who understand evolution, acknowledge that it happens, and also believe in God. Uh, but from his position uh, as a Christian, if evolution is true and there's no literal Adam and Eve, that means there was no uh, fall of man, there was no original sin, which means that this whole need for a savior to save us from right. sin is, is not an issue. It, it's a, it, it, we don't need Jesus if that happens. And his entire career of, of making money by preaching to have people become Christians uh, is irrelevant then. Right. So if, if, if this is allowed, if this is this kind of, uh, I guess it would be safe to call it propaganda. I would, I would feel comfortable myself calling it propaganda. Yeah. Um, what, what do you see as being the long-term problem of just allowing this kind of disinformation to spread? Because, because I mean, especially in this day and age of mass communication, I mean, there's a lot of misinformation going around, uh, you know, about the dangers of cell phones, about, about anything, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, what, do you, what do you see, the, what, what is the long-term danger of this point of view being passed, out to, passed on to children? I, I mean, I think it's just, it's a value in itself mm -hmm. to believe true things and to not believe false things. And if we value science and we value scientific research and the, the advancement of our understanding of how the world works, we have, to, we have to make sure that we're not believing things that aren't true. And by encouraging critical thinking and following the evidence wherever it leads and not starting with your conclusion and then looking for evidence to back it up and using confirmation bias to throw out any evidence that disagrees with you, uh, I mean, we can, we can get to the answer properly if we do it properly. Mm -hmm. uh, now, basically, he, like we said earlier, he went through this and these, and, and not, not only did he uh, conduct ambush interviews, but of course, he did some very slick editing. Mm -hmm. uh, there's one clip, there's the clip where um, he, uh, uh, and of course, he does it more than once where he asks a question and then he goes through like three or four people back and forth. Right, the voiceover. And the voiceover, covers. and you don't really know what question is being asked of these individual people. Uh, I mean, that, that, that's one example. Um, we, also, ahead, yeah, we also don't know, uh, I mean, he, we, we don't know, first of all, if the answers match the question because right. it cuts back and forth. But we don't know who he chose to show and who he chose not to show. It's very possible that he interviewed some people who gave him very straightforward, correct answers that he just didn't include in the DVD, which is always a problem when you're editing like this. Right, and, and as you touched upon earlier, he, um, he I, I, I know he interviewed a lot of young people, a lot of college, I mean, basically anyone who wasn't a scientist was, was a young person, a college person. And uh, most of the people that he talked to, he uh, were answering, using uh, kind of a, just colloquial understandings of terms like evolution and faith and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think that was all specifically designed to, to create the illusion that nobody really knows what evolution is or what they're talking about. Right, and I think most people have kind of a, a misunderstanding of, right. of the specific definitions of these things as used by scientists. This is a well understood process. I mean, we all know this, but uh, evolution is a, a change in the frequency of alleles within a gene pool from one generation to the next generation. We know this happens. Right. Uh, this, isn't, this isn't mysterious or, or something like that. Um, Right, but but th here's the thing, and I've noticed this myself when I watch, uh, say, the Discovery Channel or the National Geographic Channel or whatever. Um, even even uh, scientific show science shows that are that support evolution. Uh, I notice that, uh, and this is true with, and sometimes in general with people who accept evolution, there there is the tendency to speak of it as though 
there is some kind of direction to it, when in fact there is no direction to evolution. Right. It's it's not a it's not a guided process. Right. It's not. It, it doesn't have any end goal in mind. This is just nature following the the rules of nature. I say rules. It's really just patterns. But in nature is is or evolution is a process. It's no more. Uh, directed by any agent right. than a leaf that's dead falling off from a tree just following the, the rules of gravity. Right. Uh, so, the, so the penguins didn't take a vote and decide not to fly but to swim instead? No, just right. the ones that as, as their environment changed, the ones that were more adapted to it uh, survived right. and reproduced and the ones that didn't die. And in a given, and in a given environment, uh, certainly. But um, I, 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 I've, uh, I've watched some of these shows and some of them are actually very, very well done. Uh, there's a show devoted to uh, dinosaurs where the graphics are excellent. There's lots of information. But even then, of course, these networks, they have to sell toothpaste and washing de and laundry detergent, so they've got to kind of sweeten it up a little bit and throw in a little candy. And they'll, they'll, they'll portray, uh, say, a, a mother, uh, a female Tyrannosaurus who's building her nest. And they'll, they'll create kind of the idea that she is aware that she's passing on her genes. Which of that's course, I think that's a, a bit of uh, I don't know if anthropomorphizing artistic license. is the right term for it, but right they have I mean, animals uh, were animals too, of course, but right. they they had no idea of what they were doing when they were doing that. They're just their genes are reproducing. All right. So, uh, but anyway, we've established basically that that it seems that um, uh, that Ray is taking advantage of general misconceptions that have been there in the anyway, and he's kind of milking them for all they're worth to him anyway. But um, what specifically, because uh, I know that you've been in touch with some of the people that he interviewed. Right. Um, and and what, what have some of these people have, what have some of these people said uh, after having seen the finished product? So I have statements from uh, three of the, p of the four experts that he interviewed in the film. Uh, P.Z. Myers, we talked a little bit about already right. how he felt that he was misrepresented. Uh, he actually went so far as to say that he bought, and I just, by total coincidence, I have the exact same model. Right. Uh, he actually bought a audio, an audio recorder, which he says, uh, I will now pack and carry with me to every event I travel to. Creationists are welcome to ask me questions in the future and to record them, but I'll be recording everything they say too, and it'll be easier to expose their dishonesty. I suspect my request for interviews from creationists will now dry up. So, yeah. I, I mean, if, if he went so far as to say, from now on, I want to make sure I have my own record of this so that this will never happen again. Uh, and I, I mean, I think that's what his point is, even though that's not specifically his words. Uh, it, it's pretty clear that he feels that he was misrepresented. And similarly, uh, I emailed uh, Craig Stamford, mm -hmm. who uh, is a, a professor um, at uh, University of Southern California in LA. And he's a, he's a very well-established scientist. He's written 15 books. Um, he directs the Jane Goodall Research Center. He's actually uh, on his way to New Zealand right now, wow. uh, Ray Comfort's homeland, uh, <laughs> to do a book tour. But uh, I, here's what he had to say to me. Um, he said, uh, let's see here, I was distracted and agreed to the interview before I realized who he was uh, for about 15 minutes, uh, but Ray only used a, a few lines of it. Um, he said, I was treated relatively lightly compared to the butcher editing he did with the rest. Probably the central, most egregious thing in the main part of the video is Comfort's insistence on using the word kind right. from the biblical use to try and deny that species evolve into one another. It's a nonsense word, means whatever he wants it to mean, and we should call him out on it. And of course, his silly insistence that if you don't see species evolve into other species, it hasn't happened. Just like if you don't see your cancer cells growing, you don't really have cancer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just it's that's just not how this works, right? And and, uh, and of course, his completely, uh, uh, well, I my opinion, deceitful way of of trying to portray again kind as as a as an actual scientific concept and having the audacity uh, to tell a scientist, well, that's not what the theory of evolution, right? And and of course, when they're trying to answer him what the theory of evolution really is, that that doesn't end up making it in according to them. Uh, um, I also have a statement here from uh, Professor Kennedy, Gail Kennedy, oh, who was yes. interviewed in the film. Um, she says, uh, Ray Comfort not only changed several things that I said, he also did it to several of my colleagues who also appear in the film. In my career, I have done many interviews and have never been treated with such treachery. Thanks for writing. So, okay. yeah, 
I, I mean, I think it's just, it's pretty clear here that, that these people feel they are misrepresented. And uh, we did this first on Twitter, and, and mm -hmm. I would like to do it on TV as well. Yes. Um, I, uh, I, I tweeted to Ray that he should release the unedited footage of these interviews. I was just it's, coming to that. Right. That is basically American atheist challenge to Ray Comfort. Right. If he has nothing to hide, uh, if he didn't do deceptive editing and only the editing was for time, he should have no problem releasing the unedited footage of these interviews uh, with the scientists in order to prove that. Um, there's obviously a strong interest in people who have seen this to see the full interviews, so it's not just a matter of, of people not being interested. And he told us over Twitter, he tweeted back, um, that he has the footage and he would release it if we gave him a good reason to do so when we went on these interviews. I was just if, coming to that. Right. That is basically American atheist challenge to Ray Comfort. Right. If he has nothing to hide, uh, if he didn't do deceptive editing and only the editing was for time, he should have no problem releasing the unedited footage of these interviews uh, with the scientists in order to prove that. Um, there's obviously a strong interest in people who have seen this to see the full interviews, so it's not just a matter of, of people not being interested. And he told us over Twitter, he tweeted back, um, that he has the footage and he would release it if we gave him a good reason to do so when we went on TV. So we're on TV. Apparently truth isn't good enough. Right, uh, right. And uh, we're, we're on TV, so there's that one. And uh, I just gave him three good reasons, the, the misrepresentation felt by the actual interviewees themselves. Um, they um, indicated that their words have been misrepresented. You would think that if somebody misrep you know, accuses you of misrepresentation, you would indignantly release footage like this to prove that right. you didn't do that. Right, and can I, can I just quickly, because we're almost out of time, sure. is that basically Richard Dawkins f filmed the video and then uh, also edited, but it was absolutely willing to release the, in the interviews that he conducted in their entirety. Dawkins routinely on his YouTube right. channel has two hour long videos uh, of one uncut strip that just shows the, the whole thing if people are interested in watching that. In any case, we are almost out of time. Uh, you, uh, before we have to go, I just want to mention our uh, 2014 uh, convention in Salt Lake City. You can go to uh, atheist.org for more information about that. You have been watching uh, Atheist Viewpoint. I've been your host, Dennis Horvitz. Uh, Dave Moscato, our public relations director, uh, has been my guest. Uh, you have been watching Atheist Viewpoint, where reason reigns and reality rules. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. Yes, I am. I think for my.
myself I've learned to stand Kneel if you want I don't give a damn But I'm not praying anymore Can't you get free from the jail inside You sold your own mind for a place to hide Break your slave chains and cast them aside Freedom's knocking at your door I wish I could free you from yourself your disdain life and you're scared of hell they've indoctrinated you quite well but we're not falling anymore 